Hello mates, it's Tuesday, gameplay time. For today I took the liberty to take one of those ships in which I've always performed decent. The Auba is one of those ships that gives you a warm welcome when it's in your port after you just bought it. The stock loadout is truly amazing. You already have the best guns and torpedoes available and the upgrades that are available don't give you that much of an upgrade. And did I already told you that I really like the looks of this ship? For me, it is truly stunning. However, all these things about the Auba are okay-ish compared to the biggest plus point there is. You just grinded past the Furutaka, which is probably tier for tier the worst played ship in the game. So enough of how awesome this ship is. Let's see some gameplay. In this game I'm on the Two Brothers map, not really my favorite map if I'm honest. Luckily it is the domination mode, so if we take the side where the enemy isn't, at least we can cap a bit and not feel completely useless. By the way, to prevent this a bit, you can always at the beginning of a game check the enemy team composition. The side where the enemy has the biggest advantage is in most cases the side that they choose. Unlucky for me, the enemy team composition is pretty balanced, so I'm just guessing here. Together with my division mate Kursk, I choose the east side of the map. We are pretty confident with the many battleships the enemy has, that the enemy will meet us right here. With those planes coming towards us, that assumption could be totally right. Now, the Alba does not have the awesome AA as the Cleveland has. However, there is a point in which your AA will do tons of damage. That point is when you get the tier 4 crew skill advanced fire training. Most of your AA DPS is in a 3 km zone. With advanced fire training, you will boost this to 3.6 km and you are becoming more effective in plane killing. Now, I do not have that skill here, so not that many planes are taken out. So, about that thing where the enemy is coming to the east side of the map. It seems we could not have been more wrong about it. Where the hell are they? Peeking around this island confirms my worst nightmare on this map. No ships at all. Well, there are some torpedoes, but seeing from which direction they are fired at, I am pretty sure that there are not that many ships on this side. When I'm in most ships and I see the full torpedo spread of an enemy ship, I always use the trick of slowing down and steering into them. Just be careful that you see the full spread and not half of the spread, as some skilled players will wait with their second volley of torpedoes just for that moment. Now, normally I cut out this part of the gameplay. Nothing is happening and nothing will happen with our ship in the coming minute. However, this channel is about improving your gameplay, so let's see how we can help our team. We begin checking the minimap and see that our carriers are still in the north side and are basically a big present for the enemy ships. Seeing that this is likely gonna happen, Chris and I type in chat and ping on the map to warn them of the situation. That's about all you can do for your team in this case. Don't be mad about it if they don't listen. It is them playing their game and if you just focus on playing your game and improving on it, you will have a good game anyway. Kursk, being the good guy he is, is even turning around and will protect their way of escape. It is still, of course, two players in our team who can deal damage if they are kept alive. Now there is nothing gonna happen in the coming minute apart from me not hugging the island so I will be surprised on the map by torpedoes. So let's skip to the part where there will be some shooting. We took the long way around and after receiving some enemy torpedoes from one direction, we find a Minikaze that has been bothering us with his torpedoes for most of the duration of this game. With him constantly annoying us, I already have loaded some HE. Now I'm not gonna talk about me shooting HE shells at a destroyer. I'm gonna focus on what game knowledge can do for you. The consumed range of a Minikaze is 5.9 kilometers, so my best course of action is to keep on continuing steering towards him so I close the distance between me and him and will make the smallest target possible for his torpedo spreads. 
during all of this, I check on the minimap that I will not get into a position where I cannot control the pace of the game with some cover. In this case, none of the enemy players can hit me, so picture perfect. Apart from making some horrible shots myself, this guy is pretty smart. He waits until I fire my salvo and then stirs a bit to try to dodge them all. So what I do is change the pace of my salvo. I only shoot once and wait for a small adjustment to shoot my second salvo. I finally get him, but still after watching this replay, I feel a bit ashamed. Earlier I talked about controlling the pace of the game. In the AUBA that is extremely important. It is a great ship in a 1 vs 1, but as soon as multiple targets shoot at you, you are at a great disadvantage. So what I'm doing here is check the enemy team composition and seeing, as I called the destroyer, that there is not really a close range threat anymore. So I steer my lovely Alba to the island to get some cover and hopefully control the pace of the battle and to make sure it always will be a 1 vs 1. That is also a way to punish mediocre battleship players that are on the outside of the map. Being between the islands, it will be more difficult for the enemy to focus me, but it is also more difficult for me to get shots on them. The fun thing about Japanese cruisers is that you can always play with your torpedoes if you do not have a shot with your guns. So I fire some of those and use the lead indicator as my guidance. I do not expect them to stay on course, so I fire them a bit off their expected course. After that hit by the battleship, I see my mistake. I showed my broadside and I'm lucky that he didn't hit my citadel. To make sure that it does not happen again, I changed my course so I'm angling my armor for the next targets. Well, that Omaha wasn't so lucky. For perfect shots with AP, and it is so incredibly satisfying with the Oba. On these ranges, AP will penetrate. The third traverse is pretty slow on the Japanese cruisers, so finishing the Oma off is more difficult than it seems. You can counter this with some cruise skills, but slow will be slow. As the Omaha is in cover, I cannot shoot him, but he cannot shoot me either. Now I can focus on the Cleveland, which is probably my biggest threat in this game. Not many know, so here comes the tip of the day. The citadels of the Cleveland are not straight below its chimneys. They are a little bit towards the outside of the ship. Aiming straight between the two chimneys will in most cases miss the citadels. Fighter, Knowledge about off. the game, I'm just loving it. Almost as much as my cup of coffee, but still. So if you're watching this gameplay, make sure that during the coming minutes you will take a nice sip of that coffee. Until now the game was pretty slow and the score is completely even. So let's go ham and change this. Again that dreaded Oma I could not finish off. Check again by the way, that in this moment I control the pace of the game. The Cleveland cannot hit me and I'm in a 1 vs 1 against that Oma. Now again I completely fail. I lead my shots way too much and the Oma steers away and makes himself a small target. He is quite far away, so those shots will be pretty difficult to hit. Luckily for me, suddenly a wild Miyogi appears. I still had AP loaded, so I try my first shots on him. As he is two tiers lower than me, I try some AP. The different Sobos have different results and I'm not sure what would have been better. You only will know if you continuously search for what works and what does not work in a game. What does work against battleships are torpedoes. So let's use them and see if that Miyogi with the rudder shift time of a planet will do. I did not use my repair kit when the Miyogi still had shots on me. Getting set on fire, just as you use your repair kit, is really frustrating. Oh, come on, really? That Omaha again? I thought Dick Cleveland would be my biggest adversary. Come oh, on, that guy, for real. Let's try again. 
Yes, yes! Oh man, thank you. Even a Citadel. Well, GG. I'm happy. So, let's finish the game. Well, planets are pretty big and they do not turn that fast. Captain Planadar in his Miyogi proves us that maybe he can make a nice coral reef for us. Go planet! And if you do not know what I'm referring to, go YouTube, you bastards. You missed the awesome 90s. Again, I'm trying to control the pace of the battle. There are still three ships around me, and if they focus me, I can do a magic trick my with my ship. Now you see me, and uh, now you don't. At this moment, only the Cleveland has shots on me. A pretty bad situation on itself, but this is better than when the Miyogi and the Kawachi can do damage too. Here I do something which I really like to do a lot. I use my lead torpedo indicator to see where the Kawachi is going. As you can see, it seems he is stuck. <laughs> well, let's go from lead indicator to actually using them. There are multiple reasons why I'm focusing the Kovachi and not the Cleveland here. In a 1 vs 1, the Auba in most cases will just plainly lose against the Cleveland. Furthermore, if I kill the Kovachi, I am between the islands where the Cleveland cannot shoot at me. To get me, he would have needed to go into the islands where I can use my Torps again. Well, it will not come that far. Poor Kovachi, <laughs> you're so cute. For those who missed it, until the 23rd of August, I am doing a giveaway to thank my subscribers on YouTube and my followers on Twitch for the awesome year we had. You can check the information via this video on the left side. And if you want to know more about the crew skills which I recommend on the AUBA, check the video on the right side. See you on the battlefield guys!